Okay, let's go over to the cutting board and talk about easy braided piecing. There's the cutting board. I'm moving across the room now. And I'm gonna put this right here so we can talk about this for a minute. So when we look at this little Halloween table runner, which I made several years ago. So this was made for Linderella's, the shop. This was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of six years old, but I use it as a part of my Halloween decorations here. Um, this is, we used to teach this as a class. So what we're gonna concentrate on today is actually making the center strip. Now, how you use this center braided strip when you get done with it is up to you. You can actually make a table runner if you'd like. You can, you know, and all I did was put like a four inch or three inch border here, depending on what your border fabric might look like. You could actually chop these strips up and make placemats if you like. You could actually um, make a pillow. You could actually make longer strips. So you can grow this strip and you'll see it as I do the tutorial as long as you want to make it for whatever use you're going to make it. So if your tabletop is, um, you know, seven feet long and you want a seven foot table runner, there you go. Um, or you can actually make like three or four long strips and put them together and make a baby quilt. So let's see how you start this. It's super easy to get started and it's super easy to do and it's also scrap friendly. So what I have on the table here are some strips. This is Krista Quilts fabric. If you like this, go over to KristaQuilts.com. And these are orphan jelly roll strips. So these are orphan two and a half inch strips that I've cut to two and a half inches wide by nine inches long. So two and a half inches wide by nine inches long. Now, if you have a bunch of scraps and you want to cut them at one and a half inches by 11 inches, great. If you want to cut them at two inches wide by 12 inches, fine. Whatever your length of your strip is, not necessarily the width, whatever the length of the strip is, meaning if it's nine inches uh, uh, long, 11 inches long, that will dictate how wide your braided strip can actually get cut down to. So if I'm working with nine inch long strips, that means I can probably make this about nine inches wide. If I'm working with 12 inch long strips, then this will probably become a little wider, if that makes sense. So it's very scrap friendly and whatever works. So you start with strips. For the purpose of the table runner, these are two and a half inch again by nine inch strips. And I'm just gonna move all these aside. So you just cut up a bunch or whatever you have from your scraps. And the way you start piecing this is you're just gonna put them perpendicular, two strips perpendicular to each other, just like so. So lay out perpendicular. This then flips over right sides together. And I'm only gonna sew from here to here, which is the width of the strip. So that's about two and a half inches. So I'm gonna put those two like that, right sides together. I'll bring my other sample in. So here they are, and they get sewn where the pins are. Throw that off. And what does that look like when I get done and actually press it out? It looks like that. So I have something that looks like that. Kind of like a, what is that called? A T angle thing. Right angle. A right angle thing, yes. Okay, what do I do next? I take my next scrappy strip or whatever I'm gonna put on, and so you're going to start building like this, if that makes sense. It's almost like building a staircase. So you take your next strip, same width, put it right sides together, right on top there, and you're going to sew from the length of the strip. So you're going to start here and sew all the way down the length of the strip. And so when you do that, you get something that looks like this. All right? And all I've done is press out, so you can see, everything is starting to press out the same direction, if that makes sense. So the next thing I'm gonna do is instead of adding, I don't add to this side, I'm gonna flip to the other side. And I'm gonna take my next scrappy strip, it's gonna go on, and I call it like capping off. So you're capping off each side, and that goes right sides together, just like that. I sew down the length of the strip, and you don't even have to have a good quarter inch seam. If you use the edge of your presser foot, you'll be fine too. As long as you're consistent, as long as it's a straight seam, that creates, voila, something like that. I add my next strip. 
onto the other side, whatever it is. And so I just keep building and building and building, and you just keep going. Now, keep in mind as you build your braided strip that anything that's down here at the bottom and anything that's at the other side, meaning the top of your braided strip, whenever you get at the length you want it to be, these are probably going to get chopped off. So put your the strips that you don't like or the ones that you least like at the bottom and the top. Um, save your favorite strips for in the middle. Those will get shown the most. So let's see what happens when you get a full strip done. So here I have kind of a sample. I'm kind of, this is about as long as I wanted to build it out because I wanted you guys to be able to see it, basically. So I have my strip. Now you would build this out. You would keep building out top onto the top of it, okay, until you get it the, the length you want it to be. So if you're making placemats, you maybe want this to be about 18, 19, 20 inches long. If you're doing a table runner, just build, keep building on top until you get to the length you need, or I always add about six inches, just in case. And then um, if you're doing baby quilts, again, you could build three of these, and then once we, I'll show you how you straighten these out, then you would just sew them together. So once you get it to the length you want it to be, um, I usually end up putting my ruler on it just like so. This is an eight and a half inch ruler. Now, keep in mind, what we're going to do is actually chop off this side, chop off this side, and then straighten the top and bottom. So keep in mind that these places where the braids or where the strips intersect are not necessarily the center of this braid. So what you need to do is actually take your braid give it a little fold over and use the point up here and just kind of give it a little crease. And again, this is kind of an eyeball thing. And so because this is an eight and a half inch ruler, if I wanna make this braid now eight and a half inches wide, which is what I usually do when I'm using the two and a half by nine inch long strips, um, I will uh, just kind of eyeball this, um, this ruler into the center of the strip and because I don't really like to, to just go ahead and cut and take chances, I'm going to actually draw the line with my Frixion pen. So, because I, I want to see this before I cut it. So, this is, I do this quite a lot when I'm fussy cutting too. I'll draw it in before I cut. So, I just want to make sure I'm kind of headed down the center of this, this braided strip. And I can kind of eyeball, you probably can't see it, it's right here. I just want to be able to eyeball for myself that I'm, I'm kind of in the center here. Now if I wanted to, with these two and a half by nine inch strips, if I wanted to come out another half inch on, on either side and make it a little bit more wide uh, of a braid and get more use out of my fabric strips, I could do that. Um, just for this purposes, I thought it would be easier just to put the, the ruler down. So what I'm gonna do is just chop off there. That goes away. Uh, well, let me do this so I don't do something horrible. There we go. So I'm making this eight and a half inches wide. There it is. So now I've got something that's starting to look like a braid. Now if, if I'm ready to like finish this off, let's say this goes on and on and on, and I'm making a table runner or even placemats, I need to make sure I have a straight edge here and a straight edge here to add my border fabric on if I wanted to. All I'm gonna do up here is come over to the, the uh, point where, I can, where I'm not veering in, if that makes sense. I'm lining up a straight line of the ruler to the edge I just cut. Whoosh, that goes away, unfortunately, but you're creating the look. And now you make it the size you need to make it, or you just even it up again. So here I would just even up, and you can see what I mean about put those strips that you don't like or that you least like at the bottom, because you're not going to see much of them. And there you go. I have now what looks to be kind of complicated, but it's not, because you can just see how I made it. And now I can border that. I can put three of these together and make a baby quilt, uh, meaning if they were longer, or even a, a, a lap quilt. I can, if I had uh, charm packs, this is another idea, the five inch squares, um, you could cut each five inch square into one and a half by uh, five inch strips, 
I think that would you would get four out of every five inch square and you could make this this really neat kind of scrappy looking um, braid and make a couple of those braided strips and put them together and make a pillow. Um, so those are just some ideas on the braided um, pieced strip. Let me grab my my uh, Halloween thing. So the Halloween table runner was basically um, it measures, I think it measures, you can't see the whole thing. I'm going to bet it measures about 40 inches long because it's coming off the cutting board here. And this was just based on the table I put it on uh, and where we display things. And then I just like this border print. So I cut it so I could see um, more of the border print. So this is about three and a half inches long, uh, three and a half inches wide, I'm sorry. And then I just, you know, when I straightened out my braid to either side, I just lapped and sewed on the borders and capped it off at the end and then did some binding with a stripe quilt. So there you go. That is easy braided piecing and it's really fun to do and it's really great to use all your um, scraps on.